the amount of microplastics that are deposited onto the contiguous U.S. every day is equivalent in mass to that of 10 African elephants. If you drop the water bottle on the road or on a sidewalk, there's a couple different processes that will happen in tandem. Mechanical wear, chemical wear from exposure to the sunlight and the UV that's present in that sunlight, temperatures. As it's heated up or cooled down, it can start to degrade into smaller pieces. My lab is an atmospheric chemistry lab, so we're interested in aerosols in the atmosphere. So I wanted to look at microplastics as aerosol particles. Microplastics can play a role in how clouds form. We have clouds made out of liquid water and clouds made out of ice and microplastics. When we're looking at what in the atmosphere will form an ice particle, we're very interested in the surface of that material and how it might promote ice to form on it. So when we think about temperature and ice nucleation, we wouldn't expect freezing until about negative 38 degrees Celsius or below. And so in the case of microplastics, we see ice nucleation occurring about negative 15 degrees Celsius. So when we have something that's insoluble within that droplet, then we have a defect available for ice to freeze on. And so we can get freezing at much warmer temperatures. Here's a source of ice nuclei that we didn't consider before that has an effect on climate. So the primary piece of equipment that we use to do this research is an environmental chamber that's been made in-house by uh, members of our group. This chamber allows us to cool down the water droplets containing the plastics at a consistent temperature. In order to monitor physical and chemical changes that happen with the microplastics, we use chemical characterization techniques like Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. We also use a lot of microscopy, both optical, and we also have used electron microscopy to see what's going on in terms of the surface of these microplastics. Penn State has a lot of cutting edge research that would help this problem, such as synthesizing more sustainable plastics, determining how to better recycle plastics, um, as well as researchers determining the fate of these microplastics. There are microplastics in the air, so not only can we ingest microplastics through our food and through water that we drink, but we can also inhale them, and I think that that impact on human health is not yet known and something that needs to be researched.